482. Yes, ma'am. Oh, not a problem, ma'am. Thank you. Bye. All right, guys, I think uh, we might still have a few more people logging on, but we want to get started. So uh, let me have your attention. And, you know, this is as much for the children as it is for the parents. So it's very important that everyone kind of gets involved and engaged into what we have to offer you today. So this is a very valuable event in uh, so many different ways. Uh, my name is James Cox. I'm the owner and master instructor of Premier Martial Arts. I have with me today Sifu Aaron Serta, who's one of my fourth degree black belts, professional fighter, has been with me for, heck, what, 17, 18 years? 19. 19 years, man, he was just a little kid. You know, the story here is quite a success in its own about how he started his martial arts journey and his grandfather brought him into the martial arts because uh, he wasn't making the right decisions, you know, and uh, was getting in trouble and just had too much energy that he wasn't able to uh, to channel in a good positive way. So martial arts has been quite life changing and life saving, and positive. changing, and just awesome. And it's ironic now that it's something that you know we were passing down that you're able to pass down, and then we just want to continue what we do with the martial arts. We also have Sifu Tommy Presley here, who is yeah. one of the chief instructor at our Buffalo Gap location. Hi guys. Yeah. <laughs> so we're so pleased to have you guys here, and uh, we can communicate. There will be times where we can mute and unmute, and you can chat and ask us any questions. Again, this is Premier Martial Arts here in Abilene. What is the purpose of today? Well, you know, the purpose above all is to go over some valuable safety tips. Common sense maybe, but you know, we never know until we can reiterate these important things. For the children to make the right decisions and not the wrong ones, right? When it comes to awareness, stranger danger, who is a stranger? When do we communicate? Um, you know, what, what's the right and wrong things to do if, if we're dealing with from drugs, to appropriate or inappropriate touches, to you guys to do the same. So everyone stand up and put your feet by your side, feet together, hands by your side. We're at attention stance. You know, gratitude is very important, right? So to take care of people and things and just, just a second to say thank you. So we show this appreciation with courtesy and respect from a traditional martial arts bow. So together team, ready everyone and bow. Excellent. Now you have somebody there that is taking care of you, your family, your parents, your guardians. So these are the people you should really appreciate as well. I want you to take the time and turn to your parents and do the same. Sign of respect. Bow to your parents. Go. Excellent, guys. All right, let's get started with today's lessons. Enjoy it and have a lot of fun. Yes, sir. You got it. All right, guys. So again, my name is Aaron. So if y'all do have any questions, um, y'all can raise your hand and I'll do my very best to watch every single one of y'all so I can catch on. Now do make sure y'all have a little bit of room around you because y'all will do some punches, some blocks, some kicks, some pretty cool stuff. Alright, so a couple things that we're going to go over. One, since we are going to do some really important things and fun stuff for y'all, we have some listening positions that we need y'all to do. 
Okay, so the first one is called our feet together set stance. So whenever I say feet together set, I want you to put your feet together and hands by your side, and you gotta look just like a statue, so no moving, that's what I'm talking about. It takes a lot of focus and a lot of self-control just to not move like a little statue. So we're gonna practice this stance a couple times first, okay guys? So what I want y'all to do is we're gonna warm up a little bit because we gotta do some punches and kicks here a little bit, and we're gonna do some jumping jacks, but whenever I say feet together set, we gotta snap to attention. Can y'all do that for me? Awesome, let's try. Let's do some jumping jacks. Ready to go, jumping jack, jumping jack, jumping jack, jumping jack. And feet together set. Nice. One more time, ready, jumping jack, jumping jack. And feet together set. That's what I'm talking about. Our second listening position, um, whenever we are going things that I'll show you up here um, on the TV and stuff, is our locked up position. So what I want you to do is you're gonna sit down on the ground and you're gonna crisscross applesauce. So let me see everyone sit down, crisscross applesauce. I want your hands on your knees and your back straight. That's what I'm talking about. So whenever we're going over different things that we're gonna put up here on the TV for you, I need y'all to have that good listening position also because the stuff that we're gonna go over is really important. Okay, so does I have everyone's attention? That's what I'm talking about, everyone's eyeballs. All right, so some of y'all, uh, I see some, some, some familiar faces in here, which is pretty awesome. And then I see some new faces also, which is also really cool. Um, and like I said, we're gonna go over some really cool stuff. So let's get started. So this program is called our Kids Safe Program. And it's gonna cover a wide variety of stuff for y'all. Okay, and it's gonna cover everything from smaller things to even more big, you know, dangerous things. So I need y'all to stay clear and focused for me, all right? So the first one thing we're gonna talk about is like a stoplight. You have your green light, your yellow light, and your red light, okay? Now we're gonna use this later on um, whenever we talk about different situations, but let's cover like the colors real quick. So green, what does green mean? Go, you're right, so green means go. That's like your safe area, your safe zone. So whenever we're out here with your family or your friends and you're out there having a good time, that's like a green area, all right? You're safe and you know, you're just being taken care of. And then you have your yellow zone. So the yellow zone is where it gets a little bit more sketchy, right? So there's this thing called a gut feeling. Y'all ever been in a situation where you just feel like just inside your stomach that you just, you know, something's not right? That's called your intuition. So one, you gotta learn, you know, even as a martial artist or a normal person, you know, just you gotta be able to have that intuition. And this is where we gotta start listening to our gut feeling and our intuition because this will lead into the red zone. The red zone is one of those zones where you can actually get really hurt um, or somebody's trying to take you somewhere. So you have to be um, really wary of all those situations. And we're gonna talk about those more here in a minute, okay? So I'm gonna give y'all a couple, uh, let's go with scenarios. So some of these are gonna be a little bit, you know, for some of the younger ones, and there's gonna be some for some of the older ones here. Uh, this one is, the, if you can see the picture, this is a kid swimming in a swimming pool. Now, if you're swimming in a swimming pool and you're in the super deep end and you're swimming and you get super tired, that immediately turns to that yellow zone that we talked about, right? So it was green, you're having fun, you're safe, and then you get super tired in the, in the deep end of the swimming pool, and then what happens? You gotta make a decision, right? You're tired, you're in the deep end, you can't touch, so you have to make a quick decision if you're gonna, what you're gonna do. If you gotta go back to the shallow end, if you're gonna swim to the side, because if you don't, what can happen, right? You can get really hurt, um, or you, know, you end up immediately into that red zone. So we want you to stay from the yellow zone and go immediately back to the green zone. So you gotta start trusting your instinct and start making those proper decisions. What about this one? I know it's kinda hard to see because there's a lot going on, but this is um, a, a kid holding his head uh, because he's got a headache and he's reaching inside the medicine cabinet. That is a big no-no. Right, so if you have a headache or if you're sick or if you're not feeling well, the last thing you should do is go into the medicine cabinet and try to get your own medicine. And for a lot of reasons, because there's stuff in there sometimes that, that could really hurt you if taken at the wrong time. So medicine's designed to help us and, and heal us, right? It's not designed to hurt us, but if you take it at the wrong time, then it could really hurt you, especially if you take too much of it. So you gotta make that decision of what you're gonna do. What am I gonna do? I gotta go you know, ask my mom, my dad, even if they're out in the garage or mowing the yard or taking a nap, you have to go wake them up and, and do that proper decision of making a good choice, right? So last thing y'all should do is what? Get inside the medicine cabinet by yourself? No more? Okay. Um, what about even for some of the older ones out there, for some of the, those older uh, kids out there, the ones even going to 12, 13 years old, if you're at home by yourself, um, a lot of times right now, because we are spending a lot of time at home, is you might be at home by yourself. If the door knocks, you answer it? No. It doesn't matter who it is. 
I don't need, I don't want you to answer. You need to go get your mom, go get your dad, go get your guardian. But the last thing you gotta do is answer that door. Don't answer it. Be like, hey, yeah, I don't know you, but come on in real quick. Let me go find my parents. Um, don't, don't answer it. Don't worry about it. Um, if it's really important, then you can tell your parents that somebody came by and you know they can call, make that phone call or they can come get the door. But y'all never ever do what? Open the door, right? Good job. Um, and then one, this one does happen a lot more than I really like. This is a, this, this is a picture of a bully on here. Now we do not, let me get down here real quick. Okay, so this is a picture of a bully. Now a lot of times in school, there are bullies, right? Who has a bully in their school? Everybody, right? So all y'all have bullies in your schools and I hope y'all, one, are never ever bullied, but then two, y'all can never ever ever be the bully especially since I'm gonna teach y'all some cool karate stuff. So y'all can never ever be the bully. But if you're out there on the playground or if you're in your classroom or if you're on, you know, in, in the, the lunchroom and you see the bully walking towards you, you could just stand still and see what happens. So you see the bully walking towards you, right now it's a yellow light area. I need you to get out of there and go a different direction. Um, even if you do, you know, know some martial arts, I still need you to make that wise decision of going somewhere else, right? You got to get back to that green zone where it's safe. Otherwise, it turns into that red zone where you could get hurt. And that's the last thing I want is for any of y'all to get hurt. So I need y'all to stay from that yellow zone to what zone? The green zone. That's what I'm talking about. And we're, we're also going to do some uh, pretty cool karate stuff. Some of y'all, um, some of the familiar faces I've seen y'all before. So we're going to get up real quick. Let me see y'all stand up where you're at. And let me see y'all's feet together set stance. Now from here, we're gonna do what's called our defensive stance. I want you to take your right leg and step your right leg back. And your hands come up right here in front of your face with your palms open. Good job, so your palms open because this is a more passive stance. I'm not being aggressive, I'm aggressive, I'm walking away. I can kind of talk myself away from a situation. Now this instance or this, this technique is for in case an attacker or somebody's trying to hurt us from in front of us. Okay, now there's uh, some distances that we can talk about, but one of the strikes that we're gonna do is one of your longest techniques, and it's called your front kick. And it's called the front kick because we kick in front of us. Okay, now let's try this. Let me see your hands up. There's four important parts to this, te to this technique. Is one, the balance. We gotta have some good balance so we don't fall over. I want you to bring that back leg and bring that knee straight up to your chest as high as you can. Nice, hold it and set it back down. Ooh, that's step number one. Let's do it again. Step number one, bring that knee all the way up and back down. Again, ready, knee all the way up. Now, step number two is where I snap my leg out. I actually do the kick in front of me, kick it with the ball of my foot. So I'm pointing my foot down and pulling my toes back. I want you to step number three is bring it back in and then set it back down. So we have to have that snap. If we start kicking with a straight leg, leg like this, and somebody can like grab our leg. We don't want to grab our leg, right? So we got to snap that kick. Let me see. Everyone go front kick. Again, front kick. Again, front kick. Ugh. What about the other leg? We got two legs. Ready, the other side. Ready, front kick. Again, front kick. One more time, front kick. Nice. Now I'm going to give all y'all a little secret. There is an old Chinese word called a kia. And it's like an explosive power move. And if you say kia really, really loud with your stomach, then one, it makes your kick faster and stronger and you can hit harder with it. But two, it can scare somebody away. And we're gonna, we're gonna listen to that here in a minute. Um, one of the, the self-defense moves that we talk about is gonna be our voice. So I want you to give me a real loud kia, nice and loud when you throw that front kick. So it's gonna look just like this. You're gonna throw that front kick and say kia! Nice, we gotta keep those hands up right here by our chin, nice and high, ready, go, front kick, Kia! Woo, one more time, ready, front kick, Kia! Nah, man, y'all are like little ninjas. Let's switch sides through the other side. Ready, go, front kick, Kia! Nice, again, front kick, Kia! And last time, ready, front kick, Kia! Man, y'all are amazing, good job, air high fives for everybody. Good job, guys. All right, let's sit back down real quick. Lock it up for me. Crisscross applesauce, hands on the knees, back straight. This is a really important one for y'all to focus on and listen to. Um, stranger danger. This is a big, that's what this says right here, stranger danger. This is a big important one uh, because we are at home a lot. Okay, now um, a couple things for you for a stranger. Who is a stranger? Who's a stranger? 
I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some pictures on here. I want y'all to nod your head yes or no if they're a stranger, okay? Um, is are these police officers strangers? Are they strangers? What about this doctor? This is a doctor on here. Is he a stranger? No? Is he a stranger? What about the UPS guy? Is he a stranger? Yeah? What about this lady? Is she a stranger? What about this homeless guy with his dog? Is he a stranger? What about this business guy? Is he a stranger? Yeah? So some of them were yeah, some of them were no. Um, a stranger, if y'all can see all these words up here, a stranger is anyone that you do not know until your parents introduce you to them. That means everybody that I showed you, all those pictures, they're all strangers, every one of them. But just because they're strangers, does that mean all strangers are bad? No. Just because they're a stranger doesn't make them bad. Actually, you know, a lot of the time, a lot of the strangers that we don't know are actually good people like, like me and you, right? Where they're, they're there to either help you or protect you or they're just going about their life. But that doesn't make them non-strangers. Just because they're a stranger, it doesn't mean they're bad people, like a police officer. They're not bad people. They're there to help you and protect you. But they're still a stranger until when your mom or dad introduces you to them. Now, some of these, like at school, you, you, you make your own friends in class because your parents don't know the kids and stuff. So you will make your friends in class, and then they won't become strangers that way. But for the majority of everybody else, they're always going to be a stranger until your mom or dad introduces you to them. Okay, now you got to keep that in mind whenever we get on to some of the more self-defense and stuff that we do. Okay, so a stranger is who? Somebody your parent hasn't introduced you to. Okay. So a couple facts about strangers. A couple facts, and um, these are uh, really important things that y'all need to focus on and pay attention to because this really happens, and I don't want it to ever happen to you. Okay, so one, a stranger should never, ever ask a kid for help. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. So maybe, you know, they, they come up to you while you're outside playing, like, hey, so I, I locked my keys in my car, and the window's down just a little bit, uh, and my arm's a little bit too big to get in there. Can you come over here to my car real quick and help me get my keys out? No, right? They might ask you for directions. Um, they might ask you to come see their dog. They might want to give you some candy. There's so many things that could happen, but a stranger should never, ever ask you for help. What should they never do? Ask you for help. Good job. Now, they will, um, like I said, give you some gifts or candies or try to do anything to kind of bribe you to come over to where they're at. And that's one thing that we should never, ever do. Um, now, one that happens a lot. So, especially when school gets back in, in session here. How many of y'all walk outside from school and there's the line of cars for the parents to pick up all the kids? All y'all? Yeah, there's always that line of cars for the parents to pick up their kids. Now... This one, y'all got to be wary of, because sometimes the strangers will run up there and be like, hey, so uh, yeah, your mom was in a wreck, and she's really sick, and, uh, and she's in the hospital right now. I need you to come with me, so come with me real quick. She already said it's okay. I just need y'all to come with me. They might be a stranger, and you don't know them. Do you go with them? No. No, 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 no. They'll do almost anything to try to get you to come with them, if it's trying to bribe you with something, trying to give you candy, trying to show you something, ask for help, or um, even trying to scare, scare you into their car. And that's one thing that you should always have to be wary of. So you should never, ever, ever go where? Anywhere with a stranger. So you're never going where? Anywhere with a stranger. Good job, guys. Um, so those are some tricks that uh, the, the stranger will kind of use. Now, back to those red light, yellow light, and green light. You might be out there um, on the playground and minding your business and playing and having a good fun time and somebody a stranger walks up to you and says hey I lost my puppy and he's around here somewhere can you come help me find him that's when it turns into that yellow light area so that's when you gotta listen to your intuition and you gotta kinda um, you know run away from the situation because the last thing you should do is ever go anywhere with who uh, stranger that's right so never go anywhere with a stranger um, you got you got to pay, pay attention to those green lights yellow lights and red lights because I do not want any one of y'all to end up in that red light zone you all have to go from yellow back to green as fast as you can and how do we do that you got to run you got to go help you got to go tell somebody um, like a parent or a guardian right so if somebody asks you hey come over here with me real quick what do you do run off go get help go tell somebody that's the best thing you can possibly do now, let's stand up real quick. Let's loosen those legs up. Let me see y'all get back in your feet together, set stance. And 
let me see y'all's defensive stance. So the, there you go, right leg step back, hands open, palms out, there we go. Now, in some self-defense situations, one, we have the front kick where somebody's coming in and trying to attack us or somebody's trying to take us from in front of us. Now, sometimes the distance has changed. So I can't, they're too close and I can't kick now. So I'm gonna give y'all two strikes. One's a palm hill strike. And this would be like those bully situations, right? So we're gonna have those hands up. I want you to hit with the bottom portion of your palm right here. So the little bitty bottom heel right there, that's where you're gonna hit, hit with. And let me see with your left hand. I want you to keep those elbows in nice and tight. You're gonna turn your body with that palm heel straight out to the front of you, just like a really hard high five, except like a karate high five. And then bring it all the way back into your chin. So we gotta snap it out and snap it back in super quick. Ready, let me see that palm heel. Ready, palm heel strike. Woo, again, ready, palm heel. Again, palm heel strike. What about the other hand? Ready, go, palm heel. Nice, again, palm heel. One more time, palm heel. Good job. Now, remember what that old Chinese secret word was? That real loud kia? I want you to put both palm heels together with a real loud kia for me. Ready, go, one, two, kia. Again, ready, one, two, kia. Again, ready, one, two, kia. And last time, ready, go. Kia, real loud kias. Now, sometimes that self-defense changes a little bit, okay? From a palm hill strike to like a, a chest or somewhere like that to somewhere where somebody's actually trying to take you somewhere. So um, being uh, um, somebody smaller than somebody else, we have to do a, a hard, effective strike that's gonna make sure we stay safe and get home. Now this one's gonna be a little bit different. I want you to take your palm hills just like this. So you know how you have your palm hills? I want you to point your fingers forward just a little bit. There you go. So this is called a finger strike. Now instead of hitting to like the chest or the sternum, this is somewhere that's going to like the eyeball area. Now even being a smaller person and striking you know, a grown up towards their eyes can make sure you get home safe. Okay, so it's the same motion that you did with those palm hill strikes except with your fingertips. So I want you to go straight up with just those fingertips towards the eyeballs. Let me see, ready, go, finger strike, finger strike. Again, finger strike, finger strike. One more time, finger strike, finger strike. Good job, last time, ready, one, two, Kia! And one more time just for fun, ready, go, one, two, Kia! Good job, so let's do a quick review over all three techniques. We have our defensive stance with our front kick, let me see that front kick. Nice, again, front kick. If they get a little bit closer, we have our palm hill strikes. And then if they're actually trying to pull us or take us somewhere, we have those finger strikes. Now this will work for anywhere from kids all the way to adults because it happens even you know, for women sometimes. You gotta be able to strike and get away from you know, some of those, 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 those grown attackers, right? So let's go ahead and sit back down real quick and crisscross applesauce. Hands on your knees, back straight. One thing that I always say in here is you got to start off sitting like a black belt. We always set that goal for those kids to be that black belt one day. That's a big goal to set. Uh, so in order to be a black belt one day, you got to sit like a black belt. So all y'all are doing a really good job. Hands on your knees, back straight. Um, this one right here is called safety zones and touches. We all have to be wary of, of good and bad places that somebody can touch you, right? So and it doesn't matter who they are. So let's go over a couple real quick. Um, how about just a good full frontal hug and then just holding on to you and loving on you a little bit? Can your mom or dad give you a good frontal hug and just hold you for a little bit? Yeah. What about grandparents? Can grandparents just hug on to you and hold on to you for a little bit? Yeah, that's what they're doing. They, they love on you, your grandparents. What about siblings? Brother or sister just giving you a big old hug? Of course they can. What about coaches and teammates? No, no, no. No big old holding on to you, hugging on to you, and loving on you. What about teachers or pastors? No. What about teachers? No. Good job. So there's a couple people that you're allowed to, that, that are allowed to just hug on to and love on you. And then there's some that are not. But what about good touches for those people that don't know you, those strangers that, or not even strangers, the ones that, um, that, that you do know, like your coaches or your teachers, um, or you know your friends. What are good touches that are allowed by them? What about a handshake? Good, strong handshake. Can y'all get a good, strong handshake from, from like a coach or teacher? Yeah, of course. What about um, a high five? High fives. I give high fives every day whenever we're out here on the mat. I love high fives, but it's a good, it's, it's a good touch. What about like a fist bump? Fist bump. Everyone give me a little air fist bump right here. Fist bump. 
Good job. So you can give you can give fist bumps. What about little um, shoulder pats and, and and head pats? Like good job. What about good job on the shoulder? Yeah, th those are good touches that you're allowed. But like a full frontal hug? No. Um, what about a side hug? Like a real quick, they kind of turn a little side hug pat and, and walk off. Those are good, right? Those are okay. Um, as long as they're just not holding on to you. You just got to be wary of the, or, or informative of the good and bad touches, right? What if, um, let me see here. What if somebody touches you in your private area? What do you do? Who do you tell? You got to go tell somebody immediately. And I don't, I, I don't care who it is that touches you there. I need you to go immediately and go tell somebody. Um, like a guardian or somebody that's there to protect you, mom or dad, um, grandparents, uh, the, the person that's taking care of you. You got to go tell somebody immediately. When do you do it? Immediately, right? So as soon as somebody does touch you there, you got to go tell somebody immediately, like your mom or your dad. Uh, now, some boundaries. We have a couple boundaries. Once somebody crosses your boundary, do you know what a boundary is? So your boundary is like your, your comfort zone or your, your bubble. So you know whenever somebody's walking up to you and you just feel uncomfortable because they're like inside your bubble? Yeah, that's your boundary, that's your comfort zone. So if, you gotta, if you're wary of where your comfort zone is in your bubble, there's some things you can do to make sure you don't have to use self-defense in case somebody's trying to hurt you. There's things you can do to back away and, and, and keep some distance and stuff between y'all. Like uh, your physical. Um, your physical ones, like those, those front kicks, those palm hills, those finger strikes, the ones that we did a second ago. And then your stance, your defensive stance, trying to back away. But a big one is your verbal. One of the biggest, um, strongest weapons you have is your voice, okay? You can't just um, sit there and just say, hey, no, stop, leave me alone. You got to be loud with your voice. You can't just whisper it. So we're going to work on our voice a little bit, all right? So let's stand up some. Let me see where y'all are at. We're gonna work on a verbal self-defense drill. Let's all imagine, I'm gonna do it to y'all real quick. Let's all imagine that I'm a stranger and y'all are outside playing on in your front yard or at a park and I'm just walking up here towards you and I'm trying to get your attention. One, we gotta get in our defensive stance and we gotta back away a little bit. So let me see y'all's defensive stance and we're gonna take a couple steps back. Let me see again, guys. Let me see that defensive stance and take a couple steps back. There you go. Now, this is where the verbal comes in. I might not have to actually throw punches, blocks, and kicks, but we have to use our voice a little bit. So we're going to not just scream. We're going to use words, and I'll tell you why. If you're out there on the playground, how many kids around you are just screaming? All of them, right? So if you just scream real loud, it's just going to kind of blend into everything else, everything else around you. But if you use words, it's a little bit different. And it doesn't matter if you're a, um, a child or an adult. As long as you use loud, verbal words, this is going to help a lot. Just detour and avoid the situation. So here's some basic ones that y'all can use. Is say, stop, leave me alone, and don't touch me there. As you're walking away. But you have to be loud and verbal with it. So let's try it. Let me see y'all's defensive stance. Let me see y'all take a step, step back and say, stop. Again, say, leave me alone. And say, don't touch me there. There it is. Now, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to pretend that I'm the stranger. Y'all know me now, but I'm going to pretend that I'm the stranger. And I'm walking up to you trying to get your attention. I need y'all to take some steps back. Say, stop, leave me alone, don't touch me there. Can y'all do that for me? Awesome. Let's try it. Let me see, guys, real quick. Hold on. Let me un... Do, do, do. All right, guys, let's try this. I need y'all to be real loud for me. Ready? Say, stop. Say, leave me alone. Say, don't touch me there. Oh, y'all got to be louder than that. I can hear all y'all right now. Y'all got to be a lot louder than that. Let's try that again. Ready? Say, stop. Say, leave me alone. Say, don't touch me there. They all muted again. <laughs> Good job. One more time. Ready, go, stop. Say, leave me alone. And say, don't touch me there. Good. Now, what if they still grab a hold of you and they're trying to pull you somewhere? 
If they're a lot bigger than you and you're not in here in our normal classes. In here, we teach you some real life self-defense, how to actually escape and strike and move and, and get out of dangerous situations. But I'm gonna give, for, for those of you that don't train with us, I'm gonna give y'all some really effective basic um, skills that y'all can use right now to avoid that from happening. One was our palm heels, our finger strikes, and our front kicks. But if they have a hold of our hands or our shirt or something and they're trying to pull us, we have to be able to do something to get away, right? Now, some of these things are like dropping your weight. Have y'all ever tried to pick something up that's just really, really heavy? It's just dead weight. It's just hanging there. So if you just start dropping your weight down, bending your knees nice and low, it's going to be a lot harder for somebody to pick you up and pull you. Even if they're a big or strong man and you just start dropping your weight, it's going to be hard for them to drag you away. So let's try this. I'm going to start walking up towards you. I'm going to pretend like I grab all y'all and I need y'all to drop your weight for me. Let me see. Ready? Go drop your weight. Gosh, I got to get a little lower and faster. Ready? Go drop your weight. Woo! Faster. Ready? Get ready. Go drop your weight. There it is. So drop your weight nice and low. Now, if they are a lot bigger and they're just still trying to pull you, even though they're, you know, you're trying to put up some kind of a fight, you still got to do something, right? So the next one would be turtling up, not giving them something to hold on to. So literally, just drop into the ground and turn yourself into like a turtle. It's going to be a lot harder for them to grab a hold of something. Have you ever tried to pick up a big old basketball or not? I said basketball, that was a little bitty. <laughs> a big old ball of some kind. It's hard to hold on to. There's nothing to hold on to. So do that with yourself. Turn yourself into that ball. So if you drop your weight, if they're still trying to pull you, drop down into a, a ball, hold on nice and tight, and just give them something less to hold on to. And if it's still you know, not working as much, latch on to something. Good job, Gabby. Now give it something to, to latch on to now. If they're still trying to drag you and there's no one around, no one's helping you, latch on to something. And by latch on to something, I mean a tree, a pole, grab a hold of it and just don't let go. Don't let go. Grab a hold of anything, a door handle, whatever you're, you're next to. Grab a hold of something and hold on for dear life and just hold on nice and tight, okay? So let's go over those three things one more time. One, you have to drop your weight. Drop your weight. Good. If it's not working, then just drop dead weight to the ground and cuddle up into a big old ball, just turtle up. And then the next step would be latching on to something. Just hold on tight, just hug on to it, don't let go. And then your final step, man, all those fells, bite and scratch. How many of y'all have brothers or sisters? Have they ever bit you before? It does not feel good. So it doesn't feel good. So bite or scratch. You know, if, if, if those front kicks and the palm mills and the finger strikes and you're turtling up and you're dropping your weight and you're latching on, they're still trying to pull you somewhere, bite or scratch. You gotta do something to make sure you get home safe. Uh, now, for so those of you that I, I do see on a regular basis, y'all have your releases and y'all have y'all's escapes and stuff that y'all can effectively use to get away from situations like that. Um, for everyone else that, that are new um, and that I haven't seen before, I'm glad y'all are here because these are some basic self-defense drills y'all can use um, to make sure y'all get away safe. Like dropping your weight, turtling up, latching onto something, and you're biting and you're scratching. Um, and, and finally... Be wary of those, those, three, uh, those three lights. Y'all need to stay in the green light area, right? That's where you're safe. That's where you're comfortable. Somebody's there to protect you. You're at home. You're with your friends. You're in that safe green light area. If you get to the yellow light zone and you feel like something's uncomfortable, you just have that intuition or that gut feeling that something's wrong, you got to go the opposite direction. Leave. Go back home. Go somewhere, run, go get help. Do something so you do not end up in that red zone. I do not want any of y'all there because that's where you're actually getting hurt. That's where something bad has actually happened. Um, that's where y'all need to get stay away from. And it doesn't matter if you're, you know, you, you, you don't train with us or you're a black belt. I need y'all to stay away from that, that red light zone. Even me, I've been training for 19 years and I would still much rather go home and make sure I got home safe than, than put myself in a red light area where I have to, you know, punch, bite, or scratch or kick, right? So can y'all do that for me? Make sure y'all stay from the green zone. If you get in the yellow zone, go back to the green zone, go get help, run away, do whatever you got to do so you do not have to actually use self-defense. I would much rather y'all be safe than, sorry, right? Good, is that job? Guys, give yourselves a hand, everyone. Stand up, give yourselves a hand. You deserve it. Excellent. Good job today. 
All right, parents, if you have any questions, you can get a hold of us at Premier Martial Arts. Uh, you know, we're easy to find, just James Cox, Premier Martial Arts. So send us a message and any questions. We have some really good information that we can forward to you to just keep you uh, uh, entertaining the kids, but in a powerful way of empowering them with some good martial arts and safety tips. Now, on that note, we are doing some free community uh, events. So we're doing some free online martial art training sessions. And you just need to call me so that we can schedule the time and give you the information. So we're doing these online, you know, virtually martial art lessons for beginners, kids, and adults. And we'll be glad to set those up for you guys at no charge. And then hopefully we'll be back into our schools here soon and we'll get you guys into some real action, kicking and punching. All right, I appreciate your time and effort. You guys did awesome and amazing. And thank you, Sifu, for a good job teaching today. All right, feet together, set. Let's finish with that same respect. Sifu, Presley, come on out here. And bow. Thanks, guys, good job. See you soon. Bye, guys. Thank you.